Welcome back to another learning series with Mr. Knight. Today, I want to boost your confidence before you go into any physics examination room. I need you to know something. I need you to know how to solve simple questions by understanding units. Now, let's say you go into an examination room and you see a question like this. It reads, a race car covered a distance of 25 meters in 4 seconds. What was the speed of the car in meters per second for this time of travel? All right, let's say you see another question like this. A ball of mass, 0 0.45 kilograms, is kicked vertically to a height of 6 meters. Taking that, acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. Calculate the potential energy in kilograms meters squared per second squared. Think about how would you approach these questions. Hold a minute. I'm going to show you how to actually solve them. But before I do so, I want to demonstrate something to you. So at least to bring your attention to something. I'm going to use density as my example. What do you understand by this? Density is equal to kilograms per meters cube. The first thing that you should note is that density is a physical quantity. A physical quantity is a property of matter that can be quantified. So for example, you may say what the value of density is, the amount of time, the amount of mass. And so we can attach values to quantity. What is represented by kilograms per meters cube? That is the unit. And the unit is a standard of measurement of a quantity. So once you see kilograms per meters cube, you know you're measuring density. Similarly, if you see seconds, you know you're measuring time. So they are standard in terms of measuring the quantity. Now, let us decipher what this kilograms per meters cube actually means. Kilograms per meters cube can also be written as kilograms m, the exponential sign, the 3. Now what this reads or actually means is that the slash and the exponential sign, they mean per, which also mean divided by. So if you look into this unit carefully, you will notice that it is actually saying kilograms divided by meters cube. Then from this, we know that the quantity that kilograms represent is mass, and the quantity that is represented by meters cube is volume. Then we know that from this unit, that density is equal to mass over volume. Now let's use this to answer this concept to answer the questions I showed earlier. Let's look at the first question. A race car covered a distance of 25 meters in 5 seconds. What was the speed of the car in meters per second for this time of travel? First to note, you must identify the important values and units. So there are three in this one, the 25 meters, the 5 seconds, and the meters per second, which is a unit that they want our answer to be expressed with. So let's look at this. So meters per second can also be written as this, and remember what those mean, the exponential sign and the slash, they mean per, which also means divided by. Now, therefore, means we can write this in this way, that meter divided by second. 
and meter is the unit for distance while second is the unit for time then we know that this is saying distance over time the distance given in the question was 25 and the time is 5 seconds therefore we know it is 25 meters divided by 5 seconds which equals to 5 meters per second now this type of this type of approach is very useful when it comes on to if you forget your formula. The units can help you understand or derive your formula. Now let's look at this other question. This question may be a little bit longer and may take a few more steps. So this one is saying a ball of mass, 0 0.45 kilograms, is being kicked vertically to a height of 6 meters. Taking that acceleration due to gravity is 10 meters per second squared. Calculate the potential energy in kilograms meters squared per second squared. First step, identify what is given and important quantities and also units. So let's put this into our operation. The unit that we're investigating is kilograms meters squared per second squared again it can also be written as remember you can you can remove the exponential sign and replace it by a slash but the exponential sign goes for the s so therefore the slash must go before the s now what this means again if you put it in this divided by or per and so we can represent it as a formula now by simply saying that kilograms multiply by meters squared divided by s squared. Now let's look at what was given in the question. Notice we have a kilogram, a meter, and a meter per second squared. However, based on breaking down this unit, we have a we have a s squared. But there is no S squared given in terms of a single quantity. In other words, there is no time squared. But what can we do with this? We can look at the terms or the values that were given. Notice the 6 meters, the 10 meters per second squared. If they combine, they can have the M squared and S squared. A point to note, in any operation in terms of unit is only a multiplication or a division so if you look at these two what can you do with them to gain meter squared divided by s squared if you divide them the m will cancel m and leave s squared only so therefore that cannot work so the only other feasible option here is the multiplication if multiplication cannot work then you go to division but for this specific example the multiplication is very important. So let's look at these like terms. Let's now look at how this can be broken down further. So we can look at these two. And remember, we, if we multiply m by m per s squared, we can now have m times m or the slash if you prefer that. And so if you do that, you realize now m times m is m squared over s squared. And so we can multiply all of this by our kg. So to obtain this, we multiply these two values. And then we could multiply by our kg. So let's put that together now. So this we could say 0 0.45, which is our kg multiply by remember to get this part we multiply the 6 and the 10 so therefore the 6 times 10 which will equals to 27 kilograms meters squared per second squared this is a very cool stuff i must however warn you though that these are for simple questions because sometimes for example question may give you the unit in joules for those you have to break them down or at least know them before the examination so again this is just to solve simple questions or questions that the examiner 
would have given you the unit that they wanted to measure in. All right, so I wanted to use this concept and be confident when you're doing your physics examination. And I'm at the end of this lesson and I want to see you in the other lesson. So keep connected and please be notified. See you soon.